Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Greetings. I greet you in the name of our Savior and Lord, Jesus the Christ. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels shall bow before him. Heaven and earth shall adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Look, 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 it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Another day to get right with God. We pray that you will receive God's word on today. You will turn with me to Colossians, the first chapter. And we'll read just verse 16. Colossians, the first chapter, verse 16. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been Some say 
He's a great I am. I don't know what he is to you, but to me, he's my all and all. That's why I say God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Hallelujah. God's been good to me. Amen. Colossians, the first chapter, verse 16, says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. As I reflect upon this day um, representing uh, the 19th year of me preaching the gospel and the third year of pastoring here at Ebenezer Gulfport. I realized that God made me for a purpose. And, and, and I'm not the only one. And so this text jumped out at me on today. And so I want to talk about created for a purpose. Created for a purpose. Our text today is written by the Apostle Paul during his first Roman imprisonment around 60 AD. And he writes to this church in Colossae. Colossae was a city in Asia Minor located near the Wolf River. And it was close near Ephesus. And what's peculiar about this church is the fact that Apostle Paul had never met these believers in Colossae. These believers. They was converts of a convert that Paul preached to by the name of Epaphras. Epaphras was in was in the Ephesus, and when Paul preached to him, he went and preached to people in Colossae and founded this church. And the Apostle Paul is writing to encourage them, but he's also writing to set some things in order because some false teachings had crept into the church. The false teachers known as Gnosticism, Antinomianism, and Judaism was, was being taught to this Christian church. Gnosticism. Gnostics, Gnostics. They, they pride themselves on their knowledge. What all they know. As a matter of fact, they, they believe they have special knowledge. Uh, so much so that they, they believe it's superior to what the apostles know. Gnostics. They, 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 they believe that you really was not happy unless you was in their clique, in their, in their court, in their group. That's the only way you can be happy. Gnostics denied the humanity of Jesus. That they thought that divine influence rested on this man named Jesus at his baptism. And then before he died on the cross, uh, this divine influence left Jesus. Gnostics. 
They believed that they were, there was various levels of, of, of spirits between God and man. And these spirits are the ones that produce evil. They, they, they said God is a good God and he cannot create evil. Gnostics. And, and you know I believe we have some Gnostics around here even today. Uh, uh, we have some, some relatives of, of Gnostics. Because I know of some people that you can't tell them anything. You, you may know somebody like that. Whereby they think they know everything. And then unless you're in their clique, they, they don't think you're anybody. You, you are nobody to them. And then we have people who practice religions. Religions like Christian science and Mormonism and Jehovah's Witness and other religions who don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. Gnostics. I think we got some around here today. There was Gnostics there, but there was also those Anti-Nomanism. And anti-Nomanism taught that under grace a person did not need to practice self-control. They could give themselves fully to their bodily appetites and passions. I know we got some anti-Nomanism around here today. They say stuff like, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. That they, they live by the motto, you only live once. So, so just let your hair down and just, just do what you want to do. Yeah, we got some anti-nomanism around here today. There was Gnostics, anti-nomanism. But then there, there was Judaizers. And Judaizers, they were trying to mix the Jewish law with Christianity. They believe in the system of ceremonial observation by which a person had to hope and, and achieve righteousness before God by doing ceremonial rituals in order to have favor with God. Yeah, yeah, we got some Judaizers around here today. Those that believe that they can gain merit or favor with God by doing works and ceremonial rites. They, they, they say you got to say Jesus fast, 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 over and over. You, you got to foam at the mouth. You got to go to church every Sunday and you'll be in good standing with God. But Paul makes it clear that this is not the case. Paul writes to make it known. And so here he says, he says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Let me read it from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, For it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth. Things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his service, intervention, and in and for him. He makes it clear. And there are three things I see in this text uh, that the Apostle Paul is pointing out. First of all, he shows us the root of our existence. Where we come from. The root of our existence. He says, God, Jesus is the only one that can create. For whereby uh, Satan tries to imitate. Only God can create. Creation is in his, his makeup. It's in his, in his DNA. 
God is the only one that can create. Even humans believe that they can create, but, but only God can create. And the Apostle Paul writes with clarity. For he uses the word all. And you know all means all. And so he could have easily just said God created all things. But he goes further and gives detail. And says not only the things that you see on earth. But all things in heaven as well. He could have stopped there, but he, he goes further. And he says not only the visible things, but also the invisible things. He could have easily stopped there, but he starts to describe the invisible things. He says thrones. The thrones is the power or rank of a king. He says dominions. Dominion is the power to rule. The ability to rule. He says principalities. Principalities is territory ruled by an officer or by a magistrate. Then he says powers. This word powers means authority. It's ability to do an act. And John 1 and 1 says the same thing. He says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, the same was in the beginning with God. And he said, all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus told John on the island of Patmos, he says, I'm, I'm an alpha and a maiden. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. In other words, I was before was, was. And I will be when there is no me. God created us. Shows us the root of our existence. But also see the reality of our existence. He uses the Greek word dia means through. It is through him that we are made. And we're different than the trees and the lilies of the field. Well, he gave us a mind. We're different than the creatures that crawl on the earth or the, the fowls that fly in the, in the sky. He gave us a soul and a conscience. We have a mind to choose and to make decisions with. He uses the word create. But he uses the word in the third person singular. Meaning, one person did it, God did it. He uses it in the perfect tense, in the, in the indicative mood and in the passive voice. And that just means that the action was completed in the past, but it has continuous results in the present. God did it back then, but it has continuous results in the present. And indicative move means that it really did happen. It's not a figment of your imagination, but it really did happen. It's in a passive voice to let us know that the subject is a recipient of the action. God made us. He made us and created in his image. And, and, and I, I, I went, went to Alcorn and when I got there, a, a young man that I knew before I got to Alcorn, he, he, he got to Alcorn and he changed. He used to be in the church and, and, and knew God and served God. But when he got to Alcorn, he got around the wrong crowd. And he came to me one day and he says, I don't believe God made us. I don't, I don't believe that uh, he, there is a God. 
And he says, I think that we are energy. And he says that the energy just revives itself every morning and then and it goes back down. And one day the energy would not come back up. And I was so saddened to hear and know where he came from. I tried to remind him of his of his foundation, but but he, but he, but he he was stuck on it at that time. That that we were energy. At seventeen twenty eight says, "For it is in Jesus Christ. It is in Him that we live, we move, and we have our being. I want you to know God created us for a purpose." Shows us the root of our existence. And it shows us the reality of our existence. But ultimately, it shows us the reason for our existence. He says we was created by him and for him. Created to serve and to worship him. That's why Psalm 150 closes by saying, let everything that had breath Praise ye the Lord. That's what we we're, were created for. To give God all the glory and all of the praise. God created some with the with the voice to, to sing like the angels. You are to use your voice for the glory of the Lord. God has given some a great mathematician mind. You are to use your gift for the glory of the Lord. Uh, you may not be able to sing like the angels. And you may not be able to preach like Paul. But you can say, I love the Lord. And he heard my cry and pitied my every groan. Oh, bless his name. You ought to do what, do what the Lord has given you to do. He's created you for a purpose. And Ephesians 4 and 8 says, When Jesus ascended up on high, he led the captive captive, and he gave gifts unto man. Oh, bless his name. He gave some apostles, some preachers, some pastors, some teachers. He gave all kinds of gifts uh, to humanity. And whatever, whatever your gift is, uh, you ought to use it for the glory of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. He says to go into the highways and into the byways, compel men to come into the kingdom. He says to go and be a witness. Let your light so shine that men may see you and give God all the glory. He'll give you the story, but he deserves all of the glory. And I made up in my mind that I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. He told me, just like Timothy, to preach the word be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and doctrine. Preach when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Oh, bless his name. He said, make full proof of that ministry. For it's the only, only God's word shall stand. Only God's word shall stand. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall stand. Oh, bless his name. And it's the only way men can be saved is by accepting and hearing the word of the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah to his name. Preach his word. That's what he told me to do some 19 years ago. I've been running, but he said it's time to preach. Tell the men and women that Jesus 
God's only son loves you. And he came down to 42 generations, walked on this earth some 33 long years. But one Friday, one Friday, he died for your sins and my sins. He died to heaven was satisfied. Died. Somebody says, surely this must be the Son of God. And they buried him in Joseph's tomb. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power in his hands. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was created. You was created for a purpose. He said it is by him and for him. What are you doing? With what the Lord has given you, what the Lord has told you. Well, what are you doing? It's our job to exercise our gift to to be in the will and in the way of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. I challenge you to do what the Lord say do. And he will work it out. Amen. Thank you.